So now we want to switch gears a little bit to talk about certain properties of solutions that we call colligative properties, which are properties that depend on how much solute is present in the solution. But before we can talk about these colligative properties, we need to look at some of the ways we measure concentration because all of these different ways will be useful when we are discussing colligative properties as well as how we can do calculations of those colligative properties. So some of these concentration terms are going to be familiar to you and some of them may be new. We'll start with the one that's pretty familiar, which is molarity, right? So you learn about this a while ago, and that is just measuring the number of moles of the solute dissolved in one liter of the solution. Okay, so it's important that the denominator there is the entire solution, which is solute plus solvent. There is a bit of an issue with using molarity, and that is two things. One is just the effect of temperature. The volume of a liquid is not consistent when you measure it at one temperature versus another temperature. The mass is consistent, but the volume is not. And this is giving us different densities of liquids at different temperature. And of course, that becomes important because the molarity definition requires you to divide the number of moles by the volume of the solution. So if the volume is changing, then the value of the molarity will also change, even though the number of particles has not changed. And that's not good, right? Because then we're going to get different numbers at different temperatures. So that's one issue. The other issue is that not all of the solvent and solute, when mixed together, will give an additive volume, meaning that sometimes the way the solute and solvent interact with each other may be in such a way that the interaction is stronger than we expect it to happen. So it's what we call a non-ideal solution. And when that happens, the volumes that you add may not exactly add up to the sum. So for example, you may add 500 milliliter of one thing with 500 milliliter of the other thing, and that may not necessarily give you a thousand milliliter, it might give you say 999. So there is a slight error associated with just doing those addition because of this mixing problem. And so to correct for these issues that are present in molarity, a new type of concentration measure is developed, particularly for some of these colligative property where we're measuring the properties right where the substance is boiling or when the substance is freezing. And so that measure is called molality. So it sounds very similar to molarity, except that molarity is usually given that symbol that is expressed in a bracket. So you would say molarity of NaCl would be written this way. Molality on the other hand is using this little m, lowercase m. So if you want to calculate the molality of NaCl will be presented that way. Now, molality is different because what you're doing here is you're dividing the number of moles. So here's molality, number of moles of the solute still. So same numerator, but then the bottom part is the mass, okay, of the solvent only. And the mass is expressed in kilograms, okay? So that definition is also given here. So number of moles of solute, one kilogram of solvent, that will be one mole out. And there's an advantage of this to molarity, exactly those two problems that we mentioned earlier, which is that first we use mass now, as opposed to volume. So the mass is not going to change, regardless of whatever temperature you're measuring the experiment at. And then because you are using masses, masses are just additive because those numbers don't change. When you add two numbers together, whether you're mixing whatever mass you're mixing, it's just gonna add up, okay? It's never gonna have this issue that we discussed earlier with the effect of mixing on volume. So those are kind of the two that you'll see being used in the colligative property discussion. We also have sort of a more practical measures of concentration. And these are what we call parts of solute by parts of solution. Okay, so this is basically measuring how much solute per solution. And this is expressed in either percentage, that's a common one, or it express if the concentration of solute is really low as parts per million, or if it's super low, parts per billion. And a lot of these are usually measures of, you know, environmental pollutants, for example, which are 
uh, present in very small concentration. However, even though they're present in small concentration, they are dangerous for you know our health, right? So let me just express how these things are quantified. Mass percent, which is the first one right here, is often written as percent n m over m, and just means that mass of your solute over the mass of the solution. So again, the sum of the solute and solvent. We can also have percent volume, which is right here. And all that is, is now we use volume as opposed to mass. So volume of solute over volume of solution. And again, this is then multiplied by 100% just to make it clear why that becomes a percent measure. And the reason those two are used is because some of your solutions are mixtures of solids, right? So let's say maybe you purify sodium chloride, but there's some contaminants in there that is potassium chloride. And you want to know what is the percent sodium chloride in that mixture. This is actually not that off from everyday life. Your table salt that you purchase from the grocery store usually contains both of those salt and you will see the percent sodium chloride is expressed as percent mass over mass. Percent volume over volume will just be for things that are mixtures of liquid. So uh, alcoholic beverages would be a common one in this case. So you will see, would say something like 12% alcohol in wine that tells you that 12 milliliters of alcohol is mixed in 100 milliliters of the wine solution. If you go to parts per million, the only difference there is you do mass of solute over mass of solution now but then multiply by 10 to the 6 so which is a million right and if it's part per billion then it will just be multiplied by 10 to the 9 so that's the only difference and the reason they're multiplied by those numbers is because the concentration is so small if you're just dividing mass of solute over mass of solution that you need to multiply it by a bigger number to get to the some a number that is meaningful to us okay there is a couple more that you will need to know which is mole fraction and mole percent so this this these are two that would be a little bit more relevant for purposes of calligraphy property discussion so mole fraction has a symbol chi. So this is a Greek letter pronounced chi. And if you have two things that are mixed together, so let's say a solvent and a solute. So let's say your solute is A and then your solvent is B. The mole fraction of A is simply just the number of moles of A divided by the number of moles of A plus the number of moles of B. Okay, so it's really just a, a ratio of the number of moles of one component over the total. If you want to express this as a percentage, then we just call it mole percent. So when you multiply this by 100%, then it becomes mole percent. But if you don't have the if you don't have the 100%, then it's just called mole fraction, which has that symbol chi. Okay. The key here is to know how to interchange between these measures of concentrations. The reason is because when we do experiments, sometimes it's more convenient to use one measure, but then you need to perhaps convert it to some other measure if you're trying to measure some other property. And so that's what this example highlights. It's just uh, showing you that we have hydrogen peroxide as a solution. And that solution has a concentration of 30% by mass, which just mean that, it means that percent M over M also has a density of 1.11 grams per milliliter. And they want us to use those information to calculate molality, mole fraction, and molarity. I gave the, an the answers here, but I want to actually work it out for you. So let's take a look on the right how to solve those problems. So here I'm just writing the information that's given, which is one is the mass percent of the hydrogen peroxide, which is 30%. That's given there at the top. So if you know that it's 30%, the way you interpret that number is that it means there's 30 grams of hydrogen peroxide in 100 grams of solution, because if you multiply that by 100%, you get 30%. Right now, the other information that's given is density. The density is 1.11 grams per milliliter. Sometimes students uh, misunderstand what density means. Going back to the definition that you learn in general chemistry one, density just means the mass of the comp substance divided by the volume of the substance. So everything is about the substance itself. Since we're talking about density of a solution, this really means 1.11 grams of solution over one milliliter of solution. Okay, that's what that number refers to. Now let's see how we can use those information to calculate the different things that were asked. First one is molality. For molality to calculate, we're going to need to have number of moles of the solid, which is hydrogen peroxide, and then the mass of just the solvent in kilograms. Okay, so we're going to need those two numbers. So first, let's calculate number of moles of H2O2. Well, we know that from the mass percent information that there's 30 grams of H2O2 in 100 grams of solution. So we can use that 30 grams 
and convert it in number of moles. Molar mass of hydrogen peroxide is given right here. When I do that calculation, I get 0.882 moles of hydrogen peroxide. Okay, so that solves for the numerator of the molality. Now we need the mass of the solvent, which is the denominator. To get the mass of the solvent, all I need to do is take the 100 grams of solution that I have, subtract out the hydrogen peroxide, which is 30 grams, convert this to kilograms, I get 0 0.07 kilograms. So when I divide those two numbers together, 0.882 by 0 0.07, I should get my answer in molality. So 12.6 molal, uh, it's just a little m as your unit. The next thing that we're asked is, the mole fraction of H2O2. Here I'm gonna need to take the moles of H2O2 divided by the moles of solution, which is the moles of H2O2 plus the moles of water, okay? So I'm first gonna calculate the moles of water, which is my solvent. I found out earlier that it was 70 grams, right? That's 100 minus 30. So uh, I divide this by the molar mass of water, which gives me 3.89 moles of water. And now I'm going to use it to calculate my mole fraction. This is the number of moles of H2O2. And then at the bottom here is the sum of the number of moles of H2O2 and the number of moles of water. And that gives me 0.185. Notice that mole fraction is a unitless quantity because the moles cancel away. So it doesn't have any unit and you can convert this to percentage. At that point it will be called mole percent and it's just 18.5%. The last number we were asked to calculate is the molarity which is this here. And that's of course is number of moles of the H2O2 divided by the volume of the solution now. Okay, so we want the entire thing as volume in liters. Let's see how we can calculate that. We already know the number of moles of H2O2. Earlier we calculated for that molality calculation, it was 0.882. Now all we need is the volume of the solution. And here's where the density becomes useful. We know density is mass over volume, so volume must be mass over density and mass of the solution was 100 grams. Remember, we, ha we gotta go back to the solution now, not just the water, but the entire solution, which is 100 grams. And then divided by the density, which is 1.11 grams per mil, and we get 90.9 .9 mil, or converting that to liter is 0 0.0909 liter. Calculating molarity requires us to divide the number of moles by that volume. And so we get 9.7 molar in the solution.